everyone. My name is Mary Grace Johnson. This is Catherine Lim, Hannah Burnett, and Iona Batchelder, and we're going to be playing the first movement of Bartok's first string quartet.
That was cute. They're going to play the whole piece. <laughs> we didn't know. Fantastic. Such a gorgeous piece, isn't it? I don't know about you. I hear, I hear Tristan, and I hear Herkler Tanach. I hear Ravel, um, Beethoven. I mean, they're all in there. It's an ex a really exquisite uh, harmonic display. And, um, you know, there's so many different ways to do this. It's the beauty of what we do. There's so many different approaches. And um, I love how you, you're listening to each other so beautifully. I wonder sometimes if the, the angst <laughs> of that descending interval, um, the way that connects, sometimes it feels just a little easy in the, in the early part of the, the movement before you get to that B section, which is so kind of rustic. But I, sometimes it just feels softer than loud and, and, and you know, with varied intensity. But I wonder if the actual playing of it could evoke a, just a little bit more sense of resistance. Mm. Like you, you just can't quite make it happen. What um, are they? What are those yeah. descending intervals? I mean, there, there's size right. and there's, I was, why are they size? Well, I mean, he wrote this piece because he was upset about a girl. Right. So I think sort of the first two notes are maybe him crying her name, yeah. Steffi. Right. Yeah. Well, but <laughs> it's, it's a good he guess. also described it as a funeral march. Yeah. A, a funeral. Uh, so there's a quality of not just that indeed he's in love with this girl and he's he's crying. There's a little bit of a feeling of loss. Right, it's unrequited, and and he, there's a, a little bit of a feeling of loss. Have you ever had that experience? Yes. Okay, all right. Have you ever had that experience? Not to get too personal. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't need the details. But can you tell us that? Can you, in the sound, convince us that this is painful? It was beautifully controlled, absolutely beautifully controlled, and it was beautifully. Fugal, in a sense, or contrapuntal, in a sense. I, very, very clear all the way around. But like Astrid, I sort of missed, but what are you telling us? Yeah. You want to try the opening? Beautiful, really, really beautiful. Um, one of the things that I think you can explore, and you're doing it a little bit, certainly, at, at this point, if, you're, if the care for the first note is that there's a real wealth of, of kind of emotional depth in the first note, and that you're reluctant to get off of it. Hmm. You know what I mean? So that there's a sense of the, the, the vocal connection down, is really hard to get to. And I feel a little bit that it, you, uh, especially Catherine, you could do a little bit more of the color on that first note. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that, that there's a, a, already just from the first note, you tell us that there's pain. Mm. Not, it's not just the connection. Could you just once again start it?
sorry, Iona. Sounds beautiful. <laughs> you know, I just, I just wanted to catch you before we got too far along. Um, it's wonderful. It has so much more of a sort of personal attachment. And I think when you get to this little variant where you have da da dum dee da da, um, it's, it's very clear how it's passing around the group. It doesn't necessarily sound like each of you is spurred on by the previous person. You know, it sounds kind of evenly placed, kind yeah, of rational. I, right. <laughs> and I, I think in a way it's the tie getting into it. Ah. Mm -hmm. It's not that it becomes melodic exactly, but if you can feel in some way that it's not just sitting out and then coming in and bringing out the votive. Mm -hmm. So that we really understand, hey, there, there are these lines that are interacting mm -hmm. with each other. Yeah, very actively so. Yeah, very. Um, and it, they're beautifully placed on the up bow, so you can really kind of have a scooping kind of contact. Can we try that? Um, Maybe go to? Sure. <clears throat> something it's really really beautiful let me just stop I wonder if whenever this descending interval comes it could be a little bit more complex mm -hmm. when you started it now there's a, a real emotional and dramatic complexity to it now it's not gonna be the same emotion obviously but right now it's it feels a little bit hey this is loud yeah you know yeah, what I mean right. instead of in some way rhyming with what this has been which is this kind of emotional journey and mm -hmm. uh, almost like a motif that guides us through this emotional journey. And I think that there's a little bit more that you can do in the loudest playing to give it that signature in a way. Mm -hmm. I think there's also room for the tiniest bit of rubato. Um, not that the music should necessarily sweep because you're still urgently trying to you know, express this resistance, but sometimes these 16th notes, I was thinking in your beautiful solo, so that the longer notes still have a little bit more value and they kind of pull you through in that magnetic kind of way. Yeah. You know, you guys talked about, about the romantic implications of this piece or the background for this piece. And I, I like to think of it in some respects, not just this piece, but often, that there's a, a sense of desire. There's a desire to get somewhere. There's mm -hmm. a desire to be there. There's th mm -hmm. that desire. And what I sometimes feel is when it's too steady, that it has a little bit of what I would call a virtuous sense about it, yes, yeah. which trumps the desire. And what I'd say is whenever you have the desire to rush, to go faster, don't ignore it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See what I mean? It, it's, you have to resist it, right. but you don't resist it by simply not allowing it, you know what I mean? Right. You resist it and therefore give that desire power. And that's what I, I've found a little bit, what yeah. you were talking about. You have room for rubato. Yeah. Yeah. 
feel that sense of where it is that you want to go mm -hmm. a little bit more. And just an aside, Mary Grace, when you go up for that B flat, it's just so, there's no such thing as getting there too late, I think. <laughs> I would just take my time and cult cultivate the sound and color you want and then move on. You know, you don't, don't feel like, oh, got to happen now, you know, because <laughs> it's not that kind of gesture, I think. And yeah. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid to, to, not to throw your colleagues off exactly, but don't be afraid to, to challenge their being with you mm -hmm. when you have something like that. You know what I mean? They're good. They're really good. And sometimes yeah. it's um, a little bit like you don't quite believe that or you don't trust it enough. <laughs> no, you don't trust it enough. All right, let's, put it, let's leave it there. Uh, you understand what I mean by that. Just that if, when you've got a line, and that actually goes for all of you, when you've got something that really feels like it needs this, trust. If in your rehearsals it's not quite together once, mm -hmm. probably it will be the second time because you're all paying attention. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? And so I would just say trust that more. Where's a good place to start? To someone? I'd, I mean, we can go back over some of this, but I would love to make sure to get to the viola. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. you want to yeah. yeah. skip ahead then? We could go from where we just stopped, which is, or maybe five? From five? Five, sure. yeah. yeah. What about these dynamics? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just checking that out. She just keeps telling me to. I mean, yeah, we, it's really, we've had trouble working it out because the it's balance. such a passionate thing. Right. I think the dynamics are a way of meeting that character. Like, uh -huh. uh, he obviously put them there intentionally. Right. So I think right. it's a way to be like, you're impassioned, but you can't really talk about it all the time. And it helps the feeling okay. of outburst. All right. Let me, I think you can make much more of it. Yeah. I mean, okay. much more of the mezzo pianos and piano. Right. Yeah. And the, right now, it feels a little bit like the character doesn't change quite yeah. on those. And if you look at the sense of appassionato as being, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right. So that there's a little bit more of a spoken <laughs> sense of mm -hmm. where there's, there's that kind of passion yeah. and where there's this. Mm -hmm. And right now it feels most of what you're doing, even when you drop back a little bit, it's, it's still that. You know what okay. I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you look at the at <coughs> passion as referring perhaps more to the scope, the emotional mm -hmm. and dramatic scope of it, than just the sound. Right. Yeah, true. And you know, we were talking about impact in the previous group. When you get your first forte, C, CG, yeah. um, if it's too controlled, I think you don't get the effect. I don't know the history of what you guys yeah, have discussed. Yeah, they were telling me to go ham on the first Go ham, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you can. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's just a startlingly yeah. sharp. And and both the first two, actually. Yeah. And then, because you don't have to quite deal with Hannah just yet. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, it'll be sort of a faux version yeah. of the craziness yeah. so that she can, you know, it's transparent enough for her to come through. Yeah, I definitely don't want to cover her. Yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry. She's going to be very eccentric in a minute, though. So that, that <laughs> will help. To me, I, what I felt like was that the big impact of what you were doing was you played loud. Mm -hmm. And you may want to think that the sportsando is always a kind of accent. And that accent has to do actually with Releasing. release, yeah. but not, I mean, in other words, something that comes down from the high point of the mm -hmm. attack. Mm -hmm. And it obviously is very intense, <laughs> even after you release. But it felt to me like you, in your getting it loud, we actually lost the sportsando a little bit. I see. Mm -hmm. okay. And so yeah. something that, that, that grabs <laughs> us from the accent, perhaps. Should we Could we get yeah. into that? Yeah. Uh, to before the. Yeah. Okay. Um, I hear you waiting for durations to be released. Piedanta, and the beat gives you permission to go on. I'm so sorry to, because it's so hard to play this, but I think you, you know, use, use the sound to steer the beat into place in a way. You can take a different approach instead of being on the passive side of the okay. rhythm. And I think maybe you could be a little more physical. Um, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to demonstrate on your cello. This oh. is a very rough and tumble place. Oh, you, you've got all four corners in here, don't you? Yeah, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> but maybe you could think of leveraging a little bit more on the G and C string. Okay. And being just a bit more like, you know, you're pouncing each and every time. I would anticipate the middle of Hannah's descending line. Yeah. Da 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 boom. Just be there. Yeah. I think if you wait, it seems a little polite. That's, that's the sense, of, <laughs> sense I get, yeah? yeah? To be wrong. I was wrong plenty of times when we worked on this. I would come in, in the craziest places, and it's, it's, it's good practice. I, I also think maybe you're a little polite. Okay. And I mean, he gives you molto appassionato, rubato. Right. And you are doing some rubato, and it's passionate. Mm -hmm. But it's not quite molto appassionato, and in that, something that comes from the rubato. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you just have more room to do that. Okay. I even think that the amount of rubato that you're doing actually would probably be a, right when the two of you join. And it gets a little bit more uh, precise mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. more uh, accurate yeah. okay. from that point. So you can think of a wind up. Like you really I'll, have to. I'll go for it. Yeah. I don't want to come back to this except I just want to mention it. For in all of those descending T arms, when, for instance, at, at eight or six, when you have that. What I would suggest that one of you really has that as a melody, and that you feel absolutely confident pacing the way that you do. And everybody else's responsibility is to follow that. Because I do feel like it, you did one, and then it sort of evened back out into, into really metrically predictable. You know what I mean. And just feel like that gesture always has a signature which is, has this pain in it, or, or drama, or anger, or whatever it is. Ron, do you feel like I do, that those, that mode of da, 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 starting at around six, and every time mm -hmm. before that, that it could be more left-hand driven even, that somehow the, that's the emotion is bubbling mm -hmm. over here. It sounds, yeah. it sounds really good, but just maybe a little yeah. um, focused rather than, you know, it, urgent. Yeah, and it's, it's a little bit comes in and out about how you, I still hear a little often just the ba yaram as being a little bit isolated. Mm -hmm. And I think 
if each of you really feels like that tie right before it has enough left hand heat, I think what happens is that it begins to sound like these interlocking lines rather than just a motive that sticks out. You see right, what I mean? Right. And so really feeling like that's something that you're all listening for and mm -hmm. having, I think will make a difference there. Can we do hmm. maybe the, the same thing? The what, same thing, two just before. Two before? Yeah. Beautiful, wonderful. When, when you get to this extraordinary ascending chromaticism, this is the Ravel section, yeah. um, is it possible for the three of you to be just a little softer? Mm. So that we, we enter a realm that's not yeah. normal, not of the everyday, you know, something that almost we feel the levitating of the sound. Um, it's, it's easier said than done. And then, then you wouldn't have to push. I know he says forte molto espressivo, yeah. but you want I, I, I imagine a sound that's just got a little bit more, uh, what's the word? Like translucent. Yeah, exactly, and not too opaque. Yeah. Ah, but ah, and it has a variety within yeah. it and the speed of the sound can vary. And so if you're a little bit further away, I think right. that can happen. It's really hard because you have to really work this for intonation and you've done, for the most part, a really yeah. good job with yeah. that. And when you work for intonation, you work with a certain <laughs> opaqueness in order that you can yeah. really hear it. And right. at the same time, and right. what you need to do then is to so be able to create with that same kind of intonation ear yeah. happening, right. create a different sound. You want to start right on that? By the way, that is really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yes.
so sorry to stop you, but we're, I think we're out of That's time. That's gorgeous. Bravo. Really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Nice. You guys, you have two pieces in like two days. <laughs> Bravo. Yeah.